Welcome back to Iftar with Nima. Today we explore the theme of gratitude and the importance of expressing thanks for the many blessings in our lives. Let's cultivate an attitude of gratitude that extends beyond Ramadan and into every aspect of our lives. Remember, Allah says in Surah to Ibrahim verse 7, If you are grateful, I will give you more. So gratitude increases your blessings. Do not forget, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Today on the show, we'll delve into the essence of Ramadan as we listen to soul-lifting Quranic recitation and join Nima as she goes shopping. And our Sheik will answer some popular questions about Islam. You don't want to miss our favorite part, Iftar with Nima. Welcome to Iftar with Nima. But among them, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Out and About segment on Iftar with Nima. Today we have another partnership from the Save Million Souls Initiative that you can see behind me the family aid relief packages meant for widows and single mothers and people you know indigenous people to ensure that they also celebrate Eid with us i'll look into one of the packages you can see them but before they bag this one you can see what we have for them and we'll be going around you know ensuring that not only food stuffs are given but the money to at least at least, um, you know, fuel your um, kitchen or buy gas or, you know, buy anything to make sure that the food is really cooked. Thank you to Save Million Souls Initiative. we we'll go out now into the communities. We're here in Agege, Abulegba area. I'll we'll go out, find some families that they've already, you know, listed and give these packages to them. So join me. <music> can see we're getting ready to go out to reach out so stay tuned and join us let's let's help it so i hope you've been watching so we're here at the mosque now where we have a few widows and beneficiaries of this project waiting. These are just a limited number of the packages. We'll go back later, get the other packages to the addresses of each of the beneficiaries already, you know, listed. Join us as we go inside now and give it up. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. One of our beneficiaries is here. We're giving her one pack. Now that make it be sufficient and increase you. Just like it. Okay, it's okay. SMSI, as we usually call it, it's um, established to cater for the health and nutrition of the single mothers and widows with the orphanage. So we cater for them by providing what we feel it is more beneficial in terms of um, nutritional support when it comes to full items and cash 
we stand for them when it comes to aid, testing and all that. That is what we do at Save Million. So, so we used to have our projects. We do projects before Ramadan. And what we are doing at the moment is called a uh, family aid and relief package. Just for them to also have a smile in their face at every point in time. So that's, it's just the Sodaka and it is what the Prophet preaches, especially in the month of Ramadan. So we just trying to put smile in the faces of everyone. So it is not for the fame. This is not for the money. Nobody's giving us money. Nobody's giving us anything. This is just for us to bring smile to the faces of the Muslim. So our next beneficiary is. Yeah, Mrs. Yusuf at okay. the Monty St. Thomas. Please accept, accept the package. May Allah make it easy. May Allah relieve you. May Allah ease your affairs and increase you. So we're wrapping up at this mosque. We have only three beneficiaries here. Two were present, one is absent, and we'll be handing over to a trusted person, the Imam of the mosque, to reach out on our behalf. Thank you so much. So it's a wrap. Join us on the next episode. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. You are welcome to ask the Sheikh. Today's question goes thus: What are the virtues and significance of itikaf, seclusion in the mosque for worship during the last ten days of Ramadan, and how can one perform it effectively? The question is very direct and it is talking about Al-I'tikaf. Al-I'tikaf is one of the ways out that Allah Ta'ala has given its wisdom to the Prophet to embark on towards the end of Ramadan. And the objectives, the how of it, have been well spelled out in the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Basically speaking, Al-Irtikaf finds its name from the Qur'an, Akafa. It finds its name from it, which means to seclude. Allah uses it in various parts of the Qur'an. وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِنِ عَاكِفُونَ So it means while you are secluding, while you are separate, to absorb yourself away from certain areas and places for a time. And the Arabs, they do they engage in it a lot. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did something similar before he was eventually made a prophet. But this time around, it was in a cave. But when we're talking about Itikaf with respect to Ramadan, we're talking about that legislated action in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that some of the scholars have referred to as Sunnatun Mu'akkada min Sunnan in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and emphasized sunnah from among the sunnah of the Prophet with respect to Ramadan and the last 10 days of Ramadan. The Prophet used to make itikaf like the narration of Aisha radiallahu anha who said the Prophet used to make itikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan till he passed on. So it means the Prophet was used to it. The question is now saying, how do we make the most of this etikaf? How do we do it? What are the activities that we can embark on in etikaf? The definition of etikaf is al-makthu fil masjid. Litaqarrubi ilallah. Isabab litaqarrubi ilallah when a servant stays in the mosque, in the house of Allah, with the intention of getting closer to his Lord in the last 10 days, there are certain key words that must be given the condition in this definition, simple definition of itikaf, al makthu It means you must stay somewhere. You must not be going up and down. You must not be found moving here and there. It's a stagnation somewhere. A stagnation under certain controls, under certain conditions. Al-Makthu, Fil-Masjid, where are you going to do it? 
it is in the mosque. Majority of scholars have unanimously concluded that al itikaf, itikaf, seclusion, must be in the mosque. But their argument surrounds where, which among the mosque, what type of mosque, what is the quality of the mosque. Some even went as far as saying it should not be in order than those three sacred mosques in Islam, based on the hadith that they have narrated and they have quoted as evidence, which says, لا تشد الرحال إلا إلى ثلاثة. No one should gather, package, make a package of luggage with the intention of worship except to those three sacred mosques. However, the scholars have debunked that claim that uh, the priority is for these three mosques, but that does not stop us from engaging in etikaf in other mosques. If it is another mosque, what type of mosque? Scholars equally debated it. Some said a mosque that has the accommodation for Juma, that has the provision for Juma, is the best after the three sacred mosques. Not negating or not pulling out the ordinary mosque. The ordinary mosque too can be okay. But the issue is that uh, the moving up and down will be checked and reduced if you are to do it in a mosque where Juma prayer, Friday prayer is observed. However, some other scholars say, yes, it can be a total shutdown of mundane activities, but it is still called etikaf when you go and come and renew your intention the moment you return back to the mosque. That goes to tell us that certain things can vitiate your etikaf. One of those things is for you to lose your intention, for the intention to end. Number two is for you to go out without any valid reason from etikaf. Number three is for you to lose your sanity. And number four is for you to end your being a Muslim, for you to say, I'm no longer a Muslim. The moment you do that, your etikaf has come to an end. And, and for women, the moment you start experiencing your biological state, which we normally call monthly cycle or monthly period, then it vitiates. For somebody who gives birth at the, uh, during etikaf, you know, the blood that comes out, the uh, child birth blood, it's a signal that your etikaf has ended and death too can bring an end to etikaf. These are some of the things that scholars have identified as the things that can vitiate our etikaf. I haven't said that, it is important for us to tell ourselves the things we can do while at a etikaf. Number one, al-qiyam, praying, a dua you know, supplication. Then uh, you listen to tafsir that will be rendered by somebody that is either part of you. You can interact with people there, but with decorum, but you cannot make business there. Maybe bring in wares to the venue of etikaf to sell. It might not be the best. It might not be the best because it will cause distraction for you. I have said that it is important for you to know that you can equally uh, memorize the Quran while at etikaf. You do tahajjud, you pray your tarawih, and every other action that can bring you closer to your Lord. At kar, you do a kar, you do uh, a make dua, like I said earlier on. These are the things that are expected from you doing etikaf and make sure you maximize the presence of people around you by getting from what they have and doing things in congregation. The scholars have, have said it is okay to be done. So this is where we draw the curtains today. Inshallah, we shall be listening to more responses to questions in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you for hosting me. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, sir. 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to today's Iftar with Mima. And my special guest today is Alaji Rafiu Adisa Ebiti. He is the Pro Chancellor 
Summit University of Akwara State and he is also the Chairman Mission Board, Lagos State Central Mosque. Assalamu alaikum to Thank you for hosting me. Um, I'll quickly go to the questions. Usually, uh, if I with me, my borders around everything Islamic. Okay. And you are the chairman of Mission Board, Lagos Central Mosque. You know, I heard about Mission Board when I was a child, when my father was made a member of the Mission Board. What exactly does a Mission Board do in the Central Mosque? Well, uh, it's to propagate Islam in all manifestations. The constitution of the Lagos Central Mosque is German Revolution Board is to do everything possible to propagate the thing of Islam. Mm -hmm. So it comes mm -hmm. across, it's not only the spiritual, it's also the, the physical, the, the whatever it is that is required to propagate it. Okay, so I'm aware that you wear many caps. One of that is the that in education. As a poor chancellor of um, Summit University, how has Islam influence your style of leadership? Well, everything about leadership is in Islam. The Holy Prophet Muhammad so Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a prophet, was a messenger, was a statesman, was a military general, was everything. And Islam is very emphatic on leadership. That like the, the, the lecturer today, the lecturer said, once you are three and modern, you must appoint a leader. Mm. That goes to show you the importance of leadership in Islam. That is why the Imam is the spiritual head of, of the congregation. He's supposed to provide leadership, he's supposed to provide his spiritual guidance and make the environment uh, quite comfortable and good. Are there any peculiar problems that you know you would say Muslims have on the Lagos Island, the Saliko area, where you are, you are chairman mission board? Are you also Baba Dini? And how do you say you? What solutions do you think you have to all of those problems? Well, it's, it's a national thing. It's not only a local thing. You know, and it's global. There yeah, is a lot of misrepresentation and misinformation about what Islam stands for. Well, let me tell you that Islam is a comprehensive way of life. And the manual is the Quran. So it is different from all of that religions because and that says about the Quran, that is a picture by what This is a book in which there is no doubt from a large extreme. And it goes on to give ideas on how to live our lives. Everything a man has come to do in this world has guidance and specifications in his life. But most importantly is the issue of justice. Quran chapter 4, verse 135 says, Allah says, you should stand up for justice, even if it's against your own self or the people that are close to you, because He knows each person more than you think. Mm. So part of the challenge we have in this country, in our environment, is the issue of injustice. How do we get ourselves to do the right thing? Reflecting on your Ramadan, how would you say you're able, you're able to you know, get uh, focus on your spiritual duties at this time? Well, Alhamdulillah, Ramadan, mm. I mean, the, the secret of Ramadan is what the lecturer, part of it is what the lecturer said. But my beauty is that uh, it's for me it's a special month and I prepare before I get to Ramadan. Starting from Rajab, Taban, Ramadan, and after Ramadan. So I'm already looking forward to the special month of Ramadan. But what do I do? I would like to keep this secret. But let me tell you. <laughs> Everything you need to do in the Ramadan, in the month of Ramadan, apart from the fasting, is from Ishai to Fajr. Mm -hmm. That is the secret. Because then it is said that Allah comes down to the lowest of the seven heavens yes. and the distance. And if you do those things, 
<laughs> after I shy, after Sarah went, in fact, we will say the fun. Mm. I don't want to say more than that. I can help you say that, you know, your tajud is important. That's all. There's a question I don't miss to ask my host. How was Ramadan introduced to you as a child? Did you... That was very... <laughs> <laughs> you see, when we were growing up, it was competitive. Mm. It was a test of strength. And I can remember that uh, even one particular night, the, the household was not going to make Taraway as a mistake, which is like one and a half kilometers. Mm. So I just slipped from the house. I joined because you know normally we will go in groups. So I joined mm -hmm. the group and we went to the mosque and we finished. And there was my dad. Because I was thinking I was able to come with him. Somehow, somehow, I couldn't. So I had to come back with the group. Those are the challenges and the beauty of Ramadan. You want to test your strength. You want to know. First, they start you up and say you pass to 12 o'clock. Yes, and tie it then, again. Then you, you, you say, I'm a man now, I can do it to 10, to, to two o'clock. 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Then they are calling you. And after some time, you were doing fasting with the, the, the elders. Mm. And that was uh, something rewarding because the elders, you now, you will eat with them. Yes. Yes. So you say, I'm going to talk about more way. About that, you know. yeah. That's it. Okay, sir. So, you know, I am aware that you have wear many caps. Are there any other acts that you do, you know, philanthropic acts that you do that you would like to talk about? Well, the Baby Foundation is uh, a very famous routine. I thought that there are a very astute we have started Faith Foundation. Our Faith Foundation was about reaching out to people, educating them, giving them opportunities. But uh, for me, Faith Foundation was a bit generic. The Faith Foundation is the mark we live in Africa. The first three letters are my father's name, and the mm -hmm. mark we live in mm -hmm. So it is specifically for Islam and then for humanity. Because at the end of the day, Islam talks about humanity. So yes. I just would like to be modest. We do so many things, depending on the situation in the country. And then we take leadership positions. We are running a course now to show that feeding students in schools can be done. Mm. And we've done it for like three to four years now, just selecting some institutions and doing on particular yes. days. The numbers okay. are quite interesting. Mm. But one thing we discovered was that on those days that we feed, that's 99% attendance. attendance. So these are part of what we went through when we were, when we were in school, when we were in primary school. Feeding was, was we were paying a token. This is great, mm -hmm. but it was an encouragement because we need to get government to do that, even just at the primary school level. Mm -hmm. We do up to secondary school, but even just at the primary school, so that people can be educated. It comes back to the same thing, education. Yes. When people are educated, they can they can understand certain things. They can understand like there's nothing like monthly ritual. If you do it, you mm -hmm. come with consequences. Mm -hmm. Anything negative you do comes with its own consequences. Consequence. And then you need to know that, you need to be educated. So mm -hmm. Even the foundation is, is something that uh, is there to our heart. Mm. We run it together as a family so that everybody has a role to play. May Allah make it easy. Amen. May Allah accept all the works of charity as acts of Ibadah and may count for you in this world. Amen. So it was indeed an interesting conversation. I have learned, I hope you have. And my core lesson today that I will take home is you know, justice. Justice is not about you know, going to court and getting a judgment. It is about fairness, kindness, and the balance in society. I have learned that. I hope you have. We're moving now to Iftar to break our fast. And please break your fast with us. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. And we'll also join Maghrib after this. Assalamu alaikum. Wa 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 alaikum
So I know dates is important, Professor Aslan, use dates. Just a sip of water is okay for me. <laughs> so that... 